position. This is when one compound breaks down into two or more simpler compounds or elements. So a basic formula of how we kind of can approach this is that we have one big compound that is together, so like say X and Y, and it, something happens that causes it to break down into X plus Y, so it separates out into its smaller parts. It's just backwards. It is exactly backwards from yesterday's lesson, yeah. Which makes sense, because yesterday was forming something, and today is decomposing something. So it's just the, the backwards, yeah. So let's try some examples then. So say we have hydrogen peroxide, so that's one of our, yes, that's one of our memory ones. And what state is it in? Liquid, yeah. It breaks down into its elements. So now here, you need to know what an element is. So when we look at that compound, we need to be able to think, okay, well, what, is, what are the elements that make it up? So what's one of them? Hydrogen and oxygen. So we have hydrogen and oxygen. Why? Yeah, there's a diatomic yeah. polyatomic. Go ahead. Now, at when these elements are at room temperature, what are they in their state form? Gas. So we need to put in gas. So now we balance it. H's and O's. H's and O's. Yeah. So on this side we have two of each, and this side we have two of each. So as Aiden asked yesterday, is there some equations where you don't have to do anything to it? Yeah, this is an example. You don't have to add any coefficients because it's already back. So you just leave it? You have yep. To create anything? So the answer is 1, 1, 1. Yep. If you want to put in the ones, you can. If not, you don't. Oh. Yeah. But the blank space implies 1. So we can just put that on the test. Yes. Uh-huh. All right. Another one. Ammonia. Okay, that was another memory one. So ammonia. N H three. What is it at its room temperature? Gas. Decomposes into nitrogen and hydrogen. Good one, Chris. Because they are diatomic elements. And remember, if you're not sure if it's a diatomic element, just look at that little box on your periodic table. Okay? And these are as well gases at room temperature. So we have N's and H's, N's and H's. On our reactant side, we have one N and three H's. On our product side, we have two N's and two H's. So the more complex one here is our hydrogen. There's um, three and then two. So what you want to think, and a lot of you kind of got to this place yesterday where you thought, okay, what do, what do I do here? What you want to think is you look for the lowest common denominator between those two numbers. So what's the lowest common denominator between three and two? Six. So you want to get H to six and hydrogen to six. So what would I have to do to get this one to six? Put a two in front. So this one becomes a six. This one now becomes a two. And put a three here for our H. Yeah. Now remember, the coefficient is multiplied by the subscript to find the number of atoms. Some sometimes I find students start adding. But remember, whenever you go here to here, that's times in. So that's why 3 times 2 is 6. Okay. Mm, that's it for decomposition. Okay. So try uh, pages 3 and 4 of your workbook. And then 
I'll probably give you, you know, about 20 minutes to do that.